In this video, we're going to be covering the remainder of the view tab, starting with rulers, grid lines, and guides. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Back in the view tab, we have the show section, which includes ruler, guidelines, guides, and notes. Now, these options basically give us uh, extra information that's going to show on our user interface to help us kind of work with our document. So I'll just click and show you what I mean here. The ruler, for instance, allows us to see basically the width and height of our document in inches and uh, be able to basically measure, if that's what we want to do, or estimate the approximate width or height of each element on our slide or the page we're working on. Guidelines can go a step above that by even showing us each one inch square box. This is one inch by one inch using the current measurement system. Um, and using that, we could easily expand that to make a two inch by two inch box. And this could be useful when we're designing our slides if we want to try to make things pixel perfect. And these guidelines in the ruler would be useful because it allows us to visually see exactly how large our objects are on the screen compared to the other objects inside of our slide. So it would be helpful for slide design in that sense. Now the guides are probably one of the most useful tools here because instead of just being able to see visually how wide something is or what the distance between two points on your slide are, you can actually uh, clip different objects on your slide to wherever you set the guidelines at. So if we have this guideline set at three inches and this one, the horizontal guideline, then if we add an object to our slide, let's say a picture, um, we'll just type picture in here. I don't need to get anything fancy. Uh, we'll just insert this balloon. We can take this object and actually clip it right on the border for wherever we set the guidelines for. So this allows us to snap objects to exactly where we want them inside of our slides. And because the guidelines are movable, we can easily do this for any spot on our slide that we want. So if we instead decide we want this balloon to be over here at the uh, plus two inches out of the center mark. Um, and we also want it to be down an inch from the center vertically. Then we just move our object down here. This is the way that you would have a pixel perfect slide inside of PowerPoint 2016. Now, next up, we have the zoom options. When you hit zoom, you have the ability to choose the percentage of zoom that this display has. So right now it's at 101%, which means pretty much what we see is the actual size of the slide if we were to print it out. We can zoom in four times as much, 400%, cut it down to a third, or type in our own percent. So if we type in 20% and hit OK, it's going to look very, very small. Now, of course, um, you can zoom back in very easily in the same manner. So let's put it at 80%. And you may have also noticed that down here at the bottom right hand corner, you have these same zoom controls. You can zoom to 100% by getting it in the middle, zoom out, zoom in, even type in your own percentage just by clicking on that zoom box. Now, uh, one of the more useful tools, though, is going to be fit to window, which regardless of what window size you're actually using inside of PowerPoint 2016, it's going to fit this display to the space that's available to it. In other words, it's going to make the maximum usage of your window that's possible, and that's usually what you want. The color slash grayscale options basically do one thing, and that's to either enable the color to be showing inside of PowerPoint 2016 or to remove all of the color out of your PowerPoint presentation. So color, obviously, that's what we've been working with this whole time. You can see visually it's got all the colors from this purple at the start of the, or the end of the gradient, rather, um, back to this green at the top. Everything in between has some white colors, grays, blacks. That's all well and good. Now below color, you can see how your PowerPoint presentation would be translated into grayscale if you're going to be printing in grayscale and how it would look in black and white. Now uh, grayscale is going to be a little bit different. Grayscale is lighter than the black and white, which is going to be using up your black ink. Um, grayscale, of course, you can still see here the colors, the brightness, it's all there. It's just replacing those colors. Uh, with different levels of gray. Now, if we go over to black, you'll notice it's quite a bit darker. And there's also other options for viewing how your PowerPoint presentation would print out. 
It all depends on what you want to see. How do you want to actually print out your document? Are you going to be printing in grayscale or light grayscale or black and white? It's up to you. Mostly this is just like a print preview mode so you can figure it out before you go ahead and actually take the plunge and print. Now last up here, we have the window options. Now when we're talking about windows, we're talking about this entire PowerPoint presentation window, this whole thing we've been working in. But you may know with PowerPoint 2016 and pretty much all Windows applications, uh, you can actually have multiple windows loaded at the same time. So if we hit new window, we could actually be manipulating a whole second PowerPoint presentation here uh, that we weren't working on before. So we could go ahead and let's say open a previous one like the review tab document as its own window close this out and now we've got these two different windows that we're working on however you may notice immediately that you know if you're trying to have two different windows on screen at the same time it's a little bit fussy things get in your way what you might actually want to do is arrange them on your screen so that you can have multiple windows displaying and being able to be worked with and manipulated in simultaneously so for instance if you go up to arrange all what it's going to do is stack your windows on top of each other essentially so that you can see them all at once so for instance if we go up to arrange all it's going to take our screen space and distribute it so that we can see all of our windows at once so we hit arrange all and you'll notice one of our powerpoint presentation windows is over on the left the other is on the right and it's perfectly split down the center so this would be really good um you know if you need to work in two powerpoint presentations at the same time maybe you're comparing them and uh, it would be even better if you do happen to have a really big monitor um, for obvious reasons because you can only split up a screen so many times before it just gets too tiny and hard to work with. Now, if you don't want to be able to see the entire window, you just want to be able to see which windows you have open. Another option is to cascade them on top of each other. So you'll have one on top and then the ones that are behind it, um, well, you'll be able to see their titles but you won't be able to see the content inside because it's sitting behind one of them. So cascading, we see that presentation one is on top. We can see the title of the second PowerPoint presentation, but we can't actually work inside of it unless we go ahead and click on it. But um, this is actually a pretty useful tool because it allows us to make better usage of our screen. And whenever we want to switch between them, we just go down right below the PowerPoint presentation we're currently working in, click on that, um, if this one is the one that's in front of the other one to begin with, we go to the top and click behind it, and you can see that it's really easy to switch between them when we have them cascaded. Move Split allows us to take the different panes of PowerPoint 2016 and adjust the little dividing line to determine which pane gets how much space. Now, we could always just click on the dividing line between them and left click, hold, drag it um, to get it exactly where you want it to be. Or you can hit move split and when you hit move split you can adjust it by using your keyboard instead so we can hit left and right to adjust it in the exact same way we can also do up and down um, to basically take the center pane and allow the notes pane to actually show at the bottom you may actually notice that down at the bottom you have buttons which allow you to bring out the notes pane manually or to bring out the comments pane. So I can hide notes again by just clicking on notes and I can bring out the comments pane by clicking comments. And from here, um, as we've talked about previously, you can go ahead and add in comments to your document anywhere you want. These don't show in the document, but are notes that other people can see, i.e. comments. Even if you have your PowerPoint presentations cascaded with each other, you don't necessarily need to click outside of a window in order to switch between them. In fact, um, you may have the situation where you want them all to be full screen so that you have maximum space. In that case, you can use the switch windows option to switch between all of your open PowerPoint presentation windows. So I just switched to number two. I can go back to view and switch back to one very easily. It's essentially the same as Windows 10s uh, or basically all version of Windows. Um, the toolbar that they have where you can switch between the different windows of a program. It works exactly the same way, except within this, it's specifically within PowerPoint 2016.
So that's all for the view tab in PowerPoint 2016. We're probably not going to be touching much on macros simply because it's a bit of a complicated subject. And to create a macro in PowerPoint 2016, you do have to have some programming skills. So thank you for watching this video. Till the next one, I will see you then.